Hey, everybody, welcome to Wrestling Travel's Lockdown Sessions are brought to you, as always, by our good friends over in New York City, True Heel Heat Wrestling. I always tell everybody, if you want to check out a brand new wrestling podcast, you got to check out the boys over at True Heel Heat. If you want to check out two brand new wrestling podcasts, check out Stu's Wrestling Podcast. If you wanted to check out three, Wrestling Travel has a podcast coming to you now. Fridays or Saturdays, but uh, check us out as well. But check out the first two guys first because they are killing it. Um, we are always, always honored when we can have a guest on for the second time. This guest is so nice. We're going to have him on twice. Please welcome back to the show via Zoom, not via Skype. The Mad Dog, Mike Angus. Mike, welcome back to this program. Justin, absolutely brilliant to see you as always, my friend. How have you been? Doing really good. I'm looking forward to a show where we can see your, your full, beautiful face not cut <laughs> off like we were in the early editions. So uh, this is going <laughs> to be exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to, to kind of catch up with you. Of course, we catch up nearly weekly on our podcast, but... This is something different where we can dive in a little bit deeper, uh, get real, really get to know the Mad Dog. So uh, thanks for coming back on, man. No worries at all, mate. And it's always great to catch up with you and the uh, and the other guys from Wrestling Travel on Thursdays on the uh, on the live podcast. And uh, you know, we look at what's happened each week in the wrestling world, and uh, and you know, put put the world to rights some weeks. <laughs> some weeks. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to chat about anything wrestling related, mate. You know that. Um, we're still on lockdown here in the UK, so we're uh, you know we're waiting for um, things to start trying to get a bit more back to normal. I know you guys have been lucky enough to have some shows in the states, but we're still uh, still waiting. Unfortunately, TNT Extreme Wrestling, who I uh, ring announced for, our shows have to get pushed back again, unfortunately due to due to lockdown. So we're we're hopeful that we will be running in 2021 as soon as their governments allow us to do some more shows. So. Uh, yeah, looking forward to getting back to it, doing a bit of ring announcing and also uh, maybe some commentary in the near future as well. So we'll see. You know, that, that's that's a good place to start with the uh, lockdown sessions is talking about the lockdown. I was, uh, of course, when TNT was announcing that these shows were coming up in October and I'm watching the state of the world going, man. Are they ever, are they really going to be able to do this? I thought it was very um, bold of them. But of course, in the end, uh, they make a decision that you have to make uh, for the safety of the fans and the performers that you have to postpone that. But how, I know I could answer this question for you, but how did it feel for you guys to be so close yet so far? Like, man, it just, you feel like you're going to get back into it and just get a little bit of sense of normalcy and just a little bit of relief and then, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can't run your shows. What was going through your head? Yeah, it was so close as well. It was touch and go because um, Future Shock uh, had picked a weekend, which was a couple of weeks before, and were lucky enough to be able to run their shows. And, uh, you know, our team uh, backstage, guys like Steve Cullen, uh, Kira Moran, and obviously the boss, man, Jay, after had worked so hard with different sort of COVID safety ideas and things and ways that, that, you know, we could make it for the fans to enjoy themselves, but still be completely safe at our shows. There was so much stuff. That they put into place. They got, um, you know, masks made up for everybody who was going to be in attendance. The, you know, all that stuff had been prepared and paid for and everything, and uh, and delivered. And um, obviously, it was it was just good in that we weren't able to do the shows. The wrestlers were up for it. The fans are ready for it. You know, as soon as we do come back out of this next lockdown that we've just been put in, as soon as we're allowed to run shows again, um, you know, we'll have something up and coming ready. And there's uh, there's plans for next year. And it'll all just depend on when the government decide that we're going to be safe to be able to run shows with uh, with crowds and everything. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. There's, there's a few places have started to announce bits and bobs for next year, but we can't be 100% sure yet. Uh, a lot of people have purchased tickets for this year's shows. All will roll over onto anybody, you know, for the shows next year. So uh, no one's going to be out of pocket or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, we just can't wait till we're able to run again. It'll be, you know, something to look forward to. And that's the thing. Obviously, a promotion like TNT is going to take care of their fans uh, because of no promotion exists without their fans. And people will understand. What I want to know is coming from the U.S., 
um, I want to get a little bit of an understanding uh, of an international, uh, well, an international place, I should say, a different country. Um, over here in the U.S., for example, I live in the state of Wisconsin, and we were able to start running shows in June. I've been to Warrior Wrestling in Illinois, neighboring Illinois, who came up with some really great precautions that were copied and instilled by some of the bigger leagues of what they did. Some states, like our good friend uh, over in uh, New York, Vince Valor, haven't been able to do anything. Uh, I know Franco Varga, our good friend on the podcast, does, a, does some traveling and a lot of COVID testing to be able to, to do what he is doing. What I'm wondering is, I know you guys don't have states, but you have counties over in the United Kingdom, in England specifically, uh, or by city. Is it different in different areas? Are there different rules? Is the, uh, like up near Manchester, where I know there's, uh, uh, would, would be in the red maybe with uh, uh, cases, is that something that's maybe, hey, we can't do it in Liverpool, Manchester? Hey, you guys were really infected. We can't do them. But, you know, maybe in, I can't think of anything else, but like uh, down south, uh, Bristol might not be, might be able to run shows. Is that how it works over there? That's right. Yeah, at the moment. Um, so they've split it up into sort of um, the, the counties, basically. And uh, where I live, I live on the Wirral, which is just next to Liverpool. Uh, in between Liverpool and Wales, basically, and um, like a tiny peninsula there. So it takes about, for me, about an hour hour to get to Manchester. You know, I can be in Liverpool in 10, 15 minutes. Um, you know, so we're in the northwest, and then um, it's been split up into tiers, basically. So we're tier one, two, and three, with the severity of a number of cases, basically, being the higher being tier three. And if you're in that, basically, um, although the rules are changing all the time, the, the basics was sort of no no meeting up with uh, you know for sporting events, no meeting up with other houses, uh, you know lockdown, stay in your home unless you have to go to work, and uh, schools are running at the moment as normal, um, and yeah, and that's that's how it was for a little bit with tiers one, two, and three with different sort of rules and restrictions in each tier, um, and where I live, we at the time had a very high infection rate. We were told so where. Uh, the, uh, we were in tier three, so the most severe of the restrictions. So that was, uh, whereas Manchester, I believe at the time when uh, Future Shock were able to run a show, were in the tier below then. So, uh, and then suddenly it all started increasing again as the, win as the weather got worse for winter. And, uh, you know, it, it was like a second, uh, a second kick with the virus. So, um, you know, then we went into full, we're in full lockdown at the moment. Wales went in about two weeks before us for what they call the circuit breaker lockdown. So where uh, Stu, who you mentioned from Stu's Wrestling Podcast, is uh, actually back in work um, this week. As uh, strangely enough, in our uh, shoot job, we both work in the same uh, company. So uh, that's quite interesting, you know, because we both work in uh, wrestling. We're both working in the same company outside of uh, wrestling as well. So, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a funny situation where... Uh, I popped down to, uh, me and my son went to a concert in Wales last year and we went for a meal first in one of the uh, restaurants that I, that I work with, the company. Next minute, the chef bounces out and it's Stewie Palmer from <laughs> Stew's Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> awesome. Asking how my meal was and everything. Oh, Stew, great to see you. <laughs> you know, I've met so many great people in the business through you. Of course, our friends at Powered 4 TV through you and uh, one of my favorites, uh, of course, I was aware of him before, but you kind of making that proper introduction, uh, Stewie Palmer. And I got to tell you, man, he is one of my favorite dudes to have on the podcast to just talk and banter back and forth. because He's got such natural comedic timing, especially oh, no. on our podcast. I mean, and he's not even trying That's okay. uh, to, to, to make you laugh or have a better day, but he just does. And uh, I, I can't say enough about it. Uh, his podcast, his interviews that he does, fantastic. Um, of course, uh, I try to help him out. He helps me out more than ever. I got Randy Hogan and Del Wilkes on my podcast. Would have never happened without Stewie Palmer. And I hope uh, you know some of the some of the names I've given him um, might not be as prominent right now. But uh, I, I, dude, I'd do anything. I'd run through a brick wall for that guy. Mate, Stu is an absolute legend. I've been there. Uh... I was so happy to help him at the start because he reached out to me um, 
you know, very like near the start of when he was first doing it. And then we got him a few guests and then I went on myself. I did an episode, uh, episode three with Stu was, I think it may have been the first podcast I did actually. Um, and then, uh, I did episode three with him and then he had me back on and did episode five as well, which was a couple of months later. But during that time, you know, we had a little chat about wrestling and stuff and we, we were always trying to get him to pop up to TNT to come and see a show and everything there. Uh, he has, he has been to one show, but, uh, yeah, he's wanting to get to more still, but, um, yeah. And I, I, I tend to find that in wrestling, um, but there are good people. You'd be surprised here. Social media wouldn't, would have you think otherwise, but, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to meet some great people through wrestling, yourself included. And, uh, you know, people like Stu and, uh, you know, wrestling with John as the guys down at Powered 4 TV, John Scott, uh, Jess, and uh, Richard as well from, um, who was doing Turnbuckle TV before going to Powered 4. So there's some absolutely great people in wrestling. And, you know, the more uh, we can help each other out and, uh, you know, make the business a better place, then that's what it's all about, I think. And uh, as you said, helping Stu out and getting guests from the States and stuff, and him likewise putting you in touch with people who he's met. That's what it's all about, you know. I was only speaking to uh, to Bill After the other day, and, it, you know, Stu, uh, you know, speaks regularly to Bill After, and that's somebody, you know, the wealth of knowledge that's available there for him to take from, from conversations like that and then put it into his own shows, you know. And you can see as you watch Stu's shows, you know, he's he's grown in confidence and he's grown in his abilities of interviewing. Wonderful to see. Now he can sit and he can contact somebody in the States and say, can we do this podcast? And he does an absolutely spot on interviewing, you know, uh, and I think it's testament to the hard work he's put in. And, he, and you know, he really does uh, put everything into it. And it's great to see. I was only chatting to him the other day and he's looking at the figures of the amount of feedback he's getting. And, you know, you get 500 downloads, 1,000 downloads. He's, uh, interestingly enough, he just told me the other day that he is actually in the top 100 podcasts in the United States of America for the first time this week. So uh, that's amazing, isn't it? To see the people are seeing his podcast worldwide, Australia, uh, Japan, people all over the world are seeing his podcast. And, uh, and you know, that's great, great. And, you know, it just shows the hard work does pay off for him. And, uh, you know, long may it continue. Once we have some shows up and running, I'm sure there'll be plenty of... Uh, guys wanting to talk about the uh about their matches their upcoming shows and everything and then you know i'm just glad that he's been able to carry on same as you have through lockdown i've been able to get some great guests on and keep everyone entertained during this tough time you know it's been there uh, it, it's been a strange year but if uh you know if we you know if we can get out of it with a, a couple of extra friends and there uh, and you know wrestling shows coming up then everyone will be happy so <laughs> so that's uh, what i'm uh you know hoping will happen <laughs> You know, and that's that's the thing. Um, uh, a couple things you touched on that I want to touch on. Uh, confidence uh, building up. My first few shows, in fact, if we went back, and I won't do it, I will not go back and watch the interview that I did with you because uh, the one I did with Alicia, too, the very first one I did, I can't even watch it. Like, every five minutes, I'm going, um, uh... Yeah, uh, and I'm like, dude, I couldn't, I couldn't watch that guy. But it's just something that once I put it in my mind mentally, and I'll still do it occasionally. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but you know, your thoughts start to get organized. It's just me in my house, just you in your house right now. But there's still that, hey, we're recording this, so I get nervous. One of the most nervous I've been for an interview was with Al Snow. Now, I've met Al Snow on a couple of occasions before, but I'm a huge fan of watching him do interviews. I always say he's very cerebral about the sport of professional wrestling that you get nervous that you're going to say something wrong or something that he doesn't agree with. And if he calls me out, I'm done. I don't care if I've been in the business. You know, for 23 years, I haven't been in the business at the level that he's been in the business. Um, but he was absolutely a gem. Um, Stu helping out. I wanna. I, I'd be stupid if I didn't mention um, True Hill Heat with SP3. Um, yeah. He commented on one of the YouTube videos for the lockdown sessions. Dude, love it. Would love to work together sometime. And I'm going. Oh, okay. Everybody's got a podcast. I'm not trying to do a podcast. I'm trying to do when I do an interview. 
I'm trying to do an infomercial for that particular talent going, hey, maybe somebody watches this. Find something out cool about Mad Dog Mike Angus that they didn't know or just finds out about Mad Dog and goes, hey, when this lockdown's over, I'm going to go check that dude out. I'm going to go to a show. I'm going to say hello or I want to buy his T-shirt. I want to check her out. That was my entire goal. Get contacted by True Heel Heat, not imagining for one minute. Because I didn't give them a chance. I just saw a couple guys in, in New York doing a podcast. It's probably stupid. Um, but then I thought, I got you know what? I got to check these guys out. The fact that they took an interest in what I'm doing. I mean, that thought of they're just a stupid podcast was in my um, brain for 0.2 seconds when I realized I'm just a stupid interviewer. Let me check these guys out. And I cannot tell you the amount of stuff that I have learned from SP3, Chrissy, JJ, watching their podcast, being on their podcast. Uh, I don't know when SP3 sleeps. So my hat's <laughs> off to them. They become great friends and somebody I look to for news in the business. Um, there's my um. Paul Benson, Hooked on Wrestling, does a great job. Chris Hatch, who I met at WrestleMania working for them. Alex McCarthy um, over there. Just a lot of people I'll, might be leaving off the list, but just the fact that all of us have worked together. When I say work together, I don't mean, you know, to the, ex the, the extent that Stewie and I work together where we're like, hey, I'll help you get this. If you can help me get this. But I'm saying that we don't knock each other. We support each other and for the greater good. Um, Alex McCarthy, I'm never going to get to his level, never going to have his viewers. But Alex McCarthy talks to me as if I'm on the same level as him. There's no ego involved. He might think some of the stuff I do, some of my interviews are dumb. He'll never say it to me. You know? Uh, and that's what I like. Same thing, Stewie. Same thing, True Hill Heat. Um, we just It's just a great support system. And you're right, the wrestling family uh, supporting each other. There's probably a couple of other points I wanted to bring out to you. But this interview, I got to remind myself, is an interview with you, not an interview with me. <laughs> So, uh, you know, sometimes you, I make fun of you. you could chat, we could chat all day, couldn't we? I know, that? that's the thing. Something about the fraternity. It's, uh, you know, some of the people that you mentioned, you know, I've interacted with, obviously, SP3, his knowledge of uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, is, you know, and his enthusiasm for it uh, has got me watching the product just from hearing him talk about it. Because, you know, it might, you know, none of my friends watch that. And, uh, you know, the, the information he gave me made me want to see it. And, uh, you know, guys like um, Alex, and obviously he works with um, with Steph and a couple of other guys. Uh, I meant to say, my whole career, basically, in professional wrestling, almost every show I've ring announced is on Powered 4 TV. So the guys who, who do Powered 4 TV, they've got all the matches from TNT Extreme Wrestling, where I've ring announced for nearly six years now. Um, they've got every match I've ring announced there. And then the local promotion by myself is, is Wrestle Island. and uh, they, I've ring announced there since that started, which started two years after TNT. So uh, I've ring announced all their shows for them, and that's all on Powered 4 TV as well. So, so basically, all, almost my whole career is on there, you know, from wrestling is on there or Fight TV. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's just, um, you know, it's, it's great that there's um, so many avenues that you can explore, even when we're on lockdown, and catch up on old matches. I, I think what you've done at Wrestling Travel is absolutely marvellous. You know, the... Uh, the lockdown sessions, the ones I've watched, have all been thoroughly enjoyable. And, uh, you know, the match content that's been put out there and things, um, it's just great. And to keep people uh, interacting and still, uh, you know, even during this tough time, keeping in touch with wrestling travel and seeing when you're going to be offering packages again and everything, it's just great to see. And, uh, you know, I think testament to you, you've done a great job, Justin. It's, uh, and they've been thoroughly enjoyable, the ones I've watched. So, uh, except but for once the ones you've then, watched, you haven't I've, watched them all? I haven't had a chance to watch them all, but I tell you what, I watched the one where I didn't have a head, and I get ribbed constantly for that. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, I've got a full head today, and everyone can see me okay. Because <laughs> well, you got a full head right now. Let's see what happens That's in the uh, well. Yeah, day after constantly is is ribbing me about that. So like, yeah. <laughs> That's, that's probably why a guy like Jay After doesn't want to be on. But no, um, Powered 4 TV, 
uh, great mention. I want to plug them because they are awesome. They've been we've been promoting uh, some free matches from time to time. The boys are getting bigger and busy. Uh, I've introduced them to a couple of U.S. promotions to be on there. But if you want to check out Power, Powered 4 TV, if you're going into lockdown or you've got some time off for the holidays, just enter our special code TRAVEL, T-R-A-V-E-L, and you'll get 50% off your first month, which gives you time to explore all of the content. Of course, True Heel Heat is now on there. Our friends at Chicagoland Championship Wrestling um, or on their Ignite Wrestling out of Florida. So you get a chance to check out what I, and, and Mike, your career is on there. But we've yeah. had some classic <laughs> matches. The most recent one uh, featured uh, Road Warrior uh, Hawk. So they've got tremendous amount of content there. Um, but yeah, I, what I've tried to, and I'm going to turn it back to you. All I tried to do during this time is obviously travel is our game. We weren't going to be able to do it. When I said, what can I do for the boys? And you were so eager to help out as well when we decided we're going to do the fundraiser for the Red Cross WrestleMania weekend um, with our good friends at uh, the Mania Pub Crawl. And then I go, we have a YouTube channel just sitting here. What I want to, How can I help these people that helped us? I helped the Red Cross. Let me try to basically, I want to do an interview and I want to find out about people, but what I want to do is I feel like when I'm doing it, this might sound cocky and I don't mean it to sound cocky. What my goal is, is that people will want to do this interview because it's an infomercial for them. People can find out about them and then maybe buy a t-shirt and support them during these hard times. And I will always treat it as such. And I will always want to have people on do it. What's happening now is a lot of people are jumping on the interview game, uh, which is fine. The best one that does it, in my opinion, Alicia too. Um, and we've worked with her several times. She has a, because she has this awesome ability to take somebody and she doesn't just talk about wrestling. She can just organically take it to music, take it to everywhere. And now I'm finding out stuff about people that I didn't even know I wanted to know. Um, <laughs> but all I want to do is just be able to support wrestlers and wrestling community. What, what I find tough is people that want money to do an interview and I understand that that's their time and I'm hopefully giving them money just by having them on hopefully they can put themselves over and people buy a shirt but it's it's tough a lot of people will say I'd, I'd love people to go give me their dream people that I could interview but the, the fact of the matter is especially the old school guys they'll, they'll want a few dollars and of course I can't afford to spend a few dollars on it because we're all based in travel, but travel is going to come back and we're going to get you there. You're protected when you sign up with wrestling travel. If it doesn't happen, we can defer to a different show. Uh, we can get you your money as it goes through. I don't know the legalities over there in the UK, but this international stuff, uh, we're like you. Without the fans, we're nothing. So we're going to take care of the fans. So please be confident when you, you sign up with wrestling travel. we got a lot of cool packages. We've aimed packages out for 2022. But I know full well, once we get this vaccine and the world gets back to normal, if WrestleMania happens in 2021 in Tampa Bay, we're going. We're bringing you there. Well, we'll if people want to be there. Same with the uh, like the Jericho Cruise. If that, you know, when, if that's 360 odd days away, you know, if that happens, you know, there's a chance that uh, that could be another great trip that you guys could go on. Um, I was going to say, yeah, going back to the whole WrestleMania thing, you mentioned that a lot of the guys in the UK participated in that. And I reached out to people and said, you know, look, this is going to be a, you know, a thing they're doing in the States to help raise money for charity. And some of the, some of the guys, you know, were in lockdown mode and weren't up for doing anything. But some people like uh, we had Rio, uh, I think Cameron Solas, um, Paul, Paul Benson that you mentioned from Hooked on Events, uh, James Greenwood, a couple of other people all, you know, came on board and wanted to help out with that. And that's great to see. And then, um, you know, more recently as well with the lockdown sessions, uh, Lizzie Evo, Alexis Falcon, a lot of the uh, the guys from the UK and the ladies are uh, all wanting to get involved and, you know, tell their story. And that's, that's great to see. And uh, I was just going to say as well, I haven't really mentioned much to you recently about what our local promotions have been up to. So I was going to tell you, TNT Extreme Wrestling have been so busy during, uh, during lockdown. You know, obviously the, the COVID safety was the main thing. But looking at like um, 
following on from the speaking out movement, they've uh, come up with like a full code of conduct and everything to keep the wrestlers and the fans at the events completely as safe as possible. And all the promotions I've worked with have been working on things like that backstage as well. Also, TNT have set up a um, or are working alongside Claw, which is going to be a training facility in Liverpool, and uh, which is going to be for people to go wrestling training. It's going to have a gym, and I believe it's going to be open sort of every day of the week, like seven days a week. It's going to be a full time wrestling facility in Liverpool, and uh, the coaches that they've announced so far to be working there is uh, Dean Allmark from the All Star Wrestling Academy. He's going to be at Claw now, and also. David Faulkner, who was um, he was an ultimate fighter, who is now a professional wrestler as well. Uh, I know him as the Encyclopedia of Pain, but uh, he's you know trained highly in uh, martial arts, mixed martial arts, and he was in uh, the Ultimate Fighter competition in the states where he uh, he lived in the house and did the full show and everything. Uh, so he's a great guy to be to be training in uh, mixed martial arts, and also uh, both those guys like Dean Ormark is one of the if not the best uh, technical wrestler I, I've ever witnessed in the UK. I've seen him at so many shows. I was just, um, I mentioned to you earlier, uh, I lo was looking through all the, all the shows I've been to wrestling show-wise, and Dean Allmark was actually on the first uh, wrestling show I went to back, at, back in the day uh, for All Star, a show that was back in about 2000, 2001. Uh, and it, there was people like Yoko Zuna, Greg the Hammer Valentine, who I know you're a fan of, uh, Barbarian, Marty Gennetti, Jake Roberts, you know, there, there was a quite talented uh, lineup there. All the guys from the States were, were over with All Star at the time. And, uh, you know, Dean was just getting his start then. But since then, he's been a, uh, an ever presence in the UK and their British wrestling scene. And um, I was lucky enough to train with him for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, he is, uh, he just knows everything. If you ask him to show you a move or, you know, to, run through anything just his drills and everything marvelous absolutely top notch and if you if you're not familiar with Dean Allmark he's somebody you definitely want to check out and have a look at a few of his matches because uh you, you know you'd be very impressed I think with the British British style and technical wrestling that he uh that he brings but uh yeah so it's exciting times for TNT with the uh, academy there and uh, Wrestle Island as well which is uh my sort of local promotion on the Wirral and um, they're doing a lot at the moment they are the first uh, promotion I've ever seen who've got a TikTok champion at the moment. So they're using oh. TikTok, and um, it's just just about to start up. But basically, you're going to be uh, there's going to be people doing TikToks are going to be able to win a TikTok championship. So I don't quite know the full ins and outs of it, but uh, that's <laughs> it's so exciting to uh, even you know you can hear your excitement there. But uh, yeah, that's something that's awesome. And uh, one thing about Wrestle Island is that they give so many young talents an opportunity on their shows and, um, and also do so much work in the local community for charity as well. And I know they've been, um, been doing all sorts of stuff, raffles and things online um, to keep their fans involved and everything. And also, um, you know, raising um, food, food for food banks and things like that. So they always do at the shows a collection whereby if you bring some food to the show to go to go to the food bank, you get to have a photograph with one of the stars of the show and, uh, and for free. So you just bring food or at Easter time, everyone brought Easter eggs and they were all donated to charity. So it's just great to see as well that they're helping the local community as well as, uh, as, well as the wrestling community. So, uh, you know, that's a big shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, giving back is huge. I want to go back and, and talk about this because I don't think it gets talked about enough. And full disclosure, we obviously don't go over any topics uh, before we, we come on the air. In fact, we just did an impromptu podcast going over Survivor Series. But the speaking out movement, I think it's very, very important that we still keep that in the forefront of everybody's minds um, because it's something we cannot just call out a few people and then forget about because I think we need to be on top. I have always said um a protect the business we need to protect the business from outlaw promoters um uh, people getting in the business that are untrained and maybe taking advantage of people uh specifically any bullying or anything so it, with the claw training obviously you just presented me to very prestigious 
trainers um and and with tnt being uh sort of a code of conduct how does that code of conduct um trickle down to the where i think it's the very most important part uh is at the beginning of your career uh, at a training school how would that how would the, this code of conduct be because if i've never trained and i'm going in how do i what do i what do i need to know and maybe you don't have the answers but what would you like to see happen well, a new recruit coming in and more yeah, specifically yeah. i'm wondering uh do more training schools need women as head trainers as well to go along with so a lot in that question i'll turn it back over to you and just yeah, put you no on worries spot. at all. Yeah, I completely agree. The speaking out movements, nothing like that can ever happen again in professional wrestling in UK, worldwide, anywhere. It just can't happen. It needs to be uh, policed better, and that is why um, there's a government initiative at the moment who have uh, who are looking into it and how things can be run safely. Uh, during lockdown, I've spoke to numerous promoters and uh, and people involved in the wrestling business myself because uh, we wanted to make sure that things like this didn't happen again so we spoke between ourselves we set up whatsapp groups we had zoom calls between quite a few of us the p people from like wales and um, preston uh live at all the companies that i work with locally and all around the country and um you know we just want to make sure that people coming into the business at that level that you speak about are completely safe uh, i don't know the exact rules at the moment when i trained at all star wrestling academy they had, um, you know, obviously insurance details were uh, were sorted out. When you um, came, you filled in documents to say who you were and everything like that. And I think they had classes for sort of a set age range at one point and then sort of the next higher up group. Uh, I'm not sure yet if floor is going to be um, just for training for people over 16 or 18. I'm sure then details will be available nearer the time. And also you touched on another really great point which is there um I, I do know there is a female trainer as well uh but i don't know if she's been announced yet so i'm just holding back that piece of okay. information because i don't want to spoil uh you know spoil something that may be coming out in the near future but yeah i believe it's um you know the world of professional wrestling needs to change and uh and it needs to be safe and it needs to be fair and uh you know if people do want to get into the business they should have the opportunity to train in a safe environment where they can get you know they can learn what they need to learn find out if they're good enough and some of the old ways that you that you see are get that are getting called out need to uh need to be the things that 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 we lose and um you know things like uh we can't have bullying in the wrestling industry in any way anymore it needs to be fair and it needs to be it needs to be better managed and just uh you know everybody needs to be safe and it needs to be enjoyable because there's a, you know, you can't have it where the industry is getting the business is tarnished constantly. Um, and just, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot of people coming, working together. And, uh, you know, everybody in the industry needs to have the same sort of ideas about where things are going and how they want things to be run. And I, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of people were rightly like appalled that any of the stuff that came out during that speaking out movement was going on because um you know th there was people involved who i've worked with and would have had no idea that anything like that was happening because you, you don't see what people's private lives are like when you're at you know when you meet up sort of once a month for a wrestling show and on that wrestling show they're literally there to do their to do their job a, a lot of the things that have happened have happened in uh, i know there's been mention of stuff happening in training schools but a lot of it is sort of outside of the wrestling business but involving people who are wrestlers and who are looked up to and well respected so uh you know they we need to be making sure that them sort of people aren't getting in positions of power where they can abuse their power and uh i'm just making sure that it's um you know i'd like to think that i'm a good judge of character for, for generally with people and for you know people who i meet but then you know, the, the stuff that happens has surprised me I was as surprised as anybody and uh, and you know it's just we need to make sure that it's safe and we need to make sure that when we do come back that we're coming back to a, a different uh, a different Brit british wrestling and for yourselves as well it needs to be 
the whole wrestling business worldwide needs to be safer and better. So hopefully it'll be uh, something that's spawned like a great change in the business and we'll have a you know much safer industry and then we'll see what happens. It is such a fine line, Mad Dog Mike Angus, um, because uh, bullying is in the eye of the person who believes they are being bullied. You and I, uh, we had our laughs with like Sergeant Slaughter and having a face only a mother could love, <laughs> but then some people could be sensitive to that and take that as bullying. And then, so what that has to do is it has to cause us, there we go. It has to cause us and the people in the business to be not just a little bit better, but be the best that they can because uh, I, could have said something like that and you could have got offended um very easily but, but that's why i say it's such a tough line um to run there has to be a, sort of a level where it's um where something can be banter or a bit of fun but if it's if it gets to the stage where it's not fun for someone else then that's when you need to be reining it in and you know there's um you know yeah things are happening in the industry even now like there's a there's a guy um kyle who's just coming through in the UK, who started doing interviews, who I've been trying to help and uh, and support to get some interviews and stuff. And what I've seen from Brit Wrestling has been amazing. So many people wanted to help this young man out who's, who's come through a lot. And, uh, you know, just one of the positive stories from lockdown is that this guy has, has come along, decided he, he wants to do some interviews. He's been a wrestling fan for a while. And he's done interviews with people like myself, um, even like, the guys from Powered 4 have reached out to him and got him doing some work and interviews with them. Stu has spoke to him and uh, Simon, Simon Hill from TNT as well, who does our interviews and things um, and presents our pre-show with myself. And um, he's reached out to him. And it's just so, so good to see that there are some, you know, positive things like that coming out of lockdown as well. And, you know, um, there's, there's times when somebody like that, you know, it might they need to be given that opportunity because, if you don't give them the opportunity, you're never going to see what they what they could offer. And then this guy's come out, and he's uh, you know, he's smashing it. He's doing great. And um, another friend I, of mine. I must be gone. on his. On. I'm on his back burner because he asked Man. me. A couple, he asked me a That's couple weeks ago if I would do an interview with him. Yeah. And I said absolutely, and he said I'll get back to you. But you know what oh, happens no, is I'm he's sure probably he's, uh, he's probably got the bigger names coming more forward now. So I'm. I'm on the back burner, which is fine. There's, nobody. there's no bigger name than JC out in there, out in <laughs> Wisconsin. There, that's the one you want to be on. I'll, he'll know about this now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but, uh, just, but yeah, yeah, it's good to see. Another guy as well who's doing great things at the moment is, is uh, Tom, who does uh, Messy for Mind. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that at all, but it's um, over in the UK. He has people doing uh, for, for Mind for charity for uh, it's like for mental health as well, and uh, he's had people doing like slime challenges. Where you you know you get like slime off a kids' TV show like Nickelodeon in the states do it quite a lot, don't they? And uh, in the UK, we used to have Noel's house party on a Saturday night where someone would get gunged in the gunge tank. But uh, and uh, Dave Benson Phillips as well used to do a, a TV show where you get slimed. But anyway, people uh, get slimed, and lots of prominent uh, people in the wrestling business have jumped on board to help out, which I think is brilliant to see. Uh, Lucy Openshaw, who's worked with us at a lot of shows. Um, you know, she she was one of the first ones I saw do it, which really caught my attention. And then since then, um, you know, this guy's worked so hard, you know, um, networking with people and everything, trying to get people involved. And only last week did I see that uh, he's had um, Gold Dust, uh, Dustin from AEW, Dustin Rhodes, reached out to him and did a little interview. And also, uh, I know he'd interviewed uh, Gold Dust's daughter as well, which was great to see. And then uh, Darby Allen. As well, reached out to him with a little video. So, um, so you know, so they're bringing it over to the states now as well, so everyone can get involved and raise a bit of money for charity, and it's all for a good cause. And uh, it's a bit of fun as well, by the looks of things. Uh, I obviously had the uh, operation a couple of weeks ago, but once I'm back to uh, back to full fitness, I'll get involved myself as well. And uh, you know, we might. I said we should do it as some sort of thing at a show, but uh, I'm not quite sure how we'd introduce it. I was saying we should do something like. Um, you know, remember the brood used to do the bloodbath. Yeah, I think we could do like a a, chari a charity uh, slime in of one of the wrestlers or something. But uh, we'll have to see how that goes. 
<laughs> yeah, let's keep it green or orange or some non-blood color, though. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, but that could be a really good thing, and all for charity. You know, I'm sure uh, we could get a uh, heel over in the UK. Maybe uh, Scott Oberman. I don't know if you're familiar with his work at all. He's an absolutely excellent heel. We've got um, young guy coming through has worked an absolutely great series of matches with Cameron Solas at, um, at Wrestle Island. And they've also had matches at TNT Ignition as well. But uh, yeah, he's the sort of person who I think, you know, people would be willing to pay a lot of money to see him get slimed during the interval, I would say. so. <laughs> yeah, that'd be... Uh... <laughs> or his great partner, Dan Evans, as well, from the uh, Merseyside Mercenary Squad. So uh, I think uh, that's certainly a couple of guys as well that you want to have a look up on uh, Powered 4 TV. And check out some of the work they've done because, uh, you know, it's uh, the, the hidden gems of uh, British wrestling that you might not uh, always get brought up all the time. So, <laughs> yeah, I love watching people that I don't know just to kind of check them out. The thing about this lockdown is um, there's so much people have had a little bit more time to go through everything. And do I want to watch some guys that are current that I never heard of, or do I want to go back and watch some classics and powered for TV? has it all one uh just touching on everything that we talked about the uh code of conduct there was some i'm going to bring up something very controversial right now um there was some a uh, quote unquote heat uh tnt announced wrestling travel would be in charge of some dbs checks and i want to clear uh something up uh for both sides Wrestling Travel's parent company uh, brings a lot of uh, international kids over to the U.S. for summer camps and had absolute, um, like, the experience to help people along with that. And I think it prematurely got announced that we were going to be, like, some big, we're going to take over and charge people an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, and take that over and, and when the truth is um, we were willing to, to share the knowledge because the last thing we want to do is you know hey we're all about making money and being a company that can be around forever but wrestling travel and and i can look everybody now right now our our core our code of conduct is to help the wrestling business in any way we can the fans uh, so that that got a little bent out of shape. So I want to make sure when people are watching this and saying, hey, we're talking about the speaking out movement and stuff. Wrestling Travel is not afraid to step back away. Wrestling Travel is not afraid to step in and help out. But I think we got a lot of stuff very, very discombobulated at the time. And as you know, um, you're a friend of us. So it's hard for you to just say it. But I've had plenty of people that understand the, the, the respect level that we come from. Where we it's that fine line we want to help out but we don't want to overstep the bounds we want we want you know and it's human nature we want everyone to like us but not everybody is going to like everybody do we make mistakes yeah we've made them in the past we try our best to correct them um we weren't so great in the past of admitting our mistakes um but now that we've we've had turnover in people that are in charge of you know Justin Clapper from the United States. I love that guy. He came on and we, we have a totally different vibe with our independent wrestling and stuff. So I just want to make sure that anybody watching that and maybe that, that I'm not afraid to talk about it. Nobody at wrestling travel is we're here to try to make it easy and try to help out. Uh, if somebody says step off, we'll step off. If somebody says step in, we're there. Um, there's my home again, because I don't want you to have to reply to that because I don't want to put you in a goofy spot. My next question is... Pro. I was going to say, JC, my, my, I heard it was a misunderstanding between uh, about that being released, but I know, you know, behind the scenes from speaking to people at Wrestling Travel, they were doing their best to facilitate something to make professional wrestling in the UK safer, and they, it was coming from a good place, and it was, uh, it was because there was nothing set up. That was the problem, and now it looks like there are going to be things set up, and there is going to be something in place to make things safer in the future, but it's great. And what, um, you know, was happening at the time, I believe somebody just needed to step up and say, okay, well, this needs doing before we come back and run shows. So someone's got to do it. And I believe, you know, the guys from Wrestling Travel's parent company uh, or whoever it was stepped up and said, listen, we'll do this and make sure that it's run professionally and correctly. 
because you know you can't go about something like that half-heartedly and it's either everybody gets on board and gets involved and, and pulls together or you have people pulling in separate directions but but something like that that you've got to make sure is that before it's released to the general public that it's absolutely 100 percent clear what's happening because the time you have an issue is when somebody who doesn't know exactly what's going on is given a question and they can't answer it and uh and yeah that's why it was just unfortunate that from what i heard that it got released when it wasn't meant to and it and it you know what they were putting trying to put in place was going to be something that was going to be very helpful and good and i'm sure it will be in the future if, if it carries on with whatever was there uh, was going on but uh i'm yeah. sure it was uh nobody ever wants to cause any offense i'm sure that's the thing you got guys like me that they'll think hey we see him on lockdown he must be pretty well in the operations but not in the operations of like our parent company so the discussions that were happening were hey via wrestling travel we can do this and then it, it took myself and danny uh joe biamonte who runs our socials very much by surprise when we got wrestlers in the dm going hey what the f is going on and we're like <laughs> not only are we struggling to figure out what what wait what's happened here and then we're going well what is what is happening what are we doing where we're we honestly didn't know at the time uh where discussions were and you know what honestly i don't know where discussions are on a lot of things at a lot of times like at right now so we uh, you know rest assured we do our best but to just just kind of get not an attack but just such an accusatory messages we're like hey trust me we <laughs> we want to do our best you know, nobody, I mean, in wrestling, I love being the bad guy, but in the real world there, none of us want to be a bad guy. So that's, that's, uh, that's good to hear from you, your point of view. And hopefully, like I said, we will, all we want is for wrestling shows to go on, us to help the fans, us to help the promotions and just be seen as, uh, the referee. The referee is that's one it. of the most important things in a match. <laughs> but you shouldn't really notice them you know just hey we're we're trying to provide we want you know we want to do the best we can um you mentioned that you just happened to have a list and you read off some of the shows that you've been to i know that you and i without even knowing each other we're at wrestlemania 28 together but give me give me a good unsung show that maybe you're at that you're like man it's you have you been to a show where something fantastic's happened uh, oh yeah i've been to, been to all sorts i've seen all sorts of stuff um give, yeah, give so me a match give so me a I'll card just, the, the, the big ones that i've been to um was uh rebellion 2002 was quite a big one that was where edge worked brock lesnar in the main event that was a that was a great one and um that was my on that card um i believe they also had their uh, booker t appeared that was one of the first times i've seen booker t live uh, it was scheduled for the undertaker to be there and uh, booker t was his replacement that evening because undertaker couldn't make it so that was an interesting one uh, insurrection 2003 um was the day before my 18th birthday so i traveled to newcastle england which is uh, about roughly about four hours away from where i live so you know for a young young man that's quite an adventure to go to the wrestling um, and that was just one of my favorite shows ever it was uh they did an interview at one point where chris jericho highlight reel where he was gonna have the uh the gm of raw on but at the time it was uh bischoff and austin so bischoff came out and did his part and then austin uh austin came down and, and uh spoiled the party <laughs> and that was uh that was just one of my like my favorite match of all time is still from that card because it was the first time seeing some of these guys and the atmosphere was so good. But at the main event was uh, Kevin Nash versus Triple H. And it was the week before they did Bad Blood, Hell in a Cell. So the sto whole storyline leading up to it was, you know, this is, they're going to have this match in England and then next week's going to be Hell in a Cell. And then uh, Austin decided that it was going to be a good old fashioned street fight. So, uh, so we had an Eng a street fight and then you see Ric Flair and Triple H in the back with Ric Flair saying nobody in England knows how to fight a street fight in England they're putting us in a street fight 
So, uh, yeah, that was one of my favourites just because uh, that main event, Triple H at the time, was, was my favourite. And, uh, you know, it was when he was doing the whole uh, the whole sort of Ric Flair sort of throwback gimmick where he was, you know, he was the man. And uh, Kevin Nash had just come back. And so that Kevin Nash had Shawn Michaels in his corner and Triple H had Ric Flair in his corner. About two minutes into the match, Flair and Michaels are in the ring. Flair's busted open. There's blood everywhere. I was on. I was on the ramp. I was covered in Ric Flair's blood. <laughs> There's all sorts going on. There was a back body drop on the ramp, and you know they really uh, brought it that night. And Nash was absolutely brilliant that evening as the powerhouse. And uh, you know Triple H had, had a great match, and then uh, it was just so entertaining. About four referees got death. There was switching music all over the show. Flair busted open steel chairs, sledgehammers. <laughs> it's a great night. <laughs> yeah.